Hello, everyone. Welcome to our final presentation for E-Week 2021. I hope you all have enjoyed the presenters we've had this week. Uh, to finish this off this week, we have Ashlyn Morgan from Kimley Horn and Associates, and she's going to share about her career in water and wastewater engineering. Take it away, Ashlyn. All right, well, welcome everybody. Thanks for checking out this presentation. Happy E-Week. Today, I wanted to talk to you about water and wastewater consulting. And so we'll just dive in with a little bit of intro. So about me, I graduated with a degree in civil engineering from Texas A&M, graduated in 2011. I think earlier this week, you had a presentation from Jonathan Brower. Jonathan and I went to school together. This is actually a picture of me from the same Spain study abroad that we both went on. So um, I took the water resources track over in Spain, got to take a GIS and a hydraulics class. Study abroad was a great experience, loved my time at a and So I graduated in May of 2011 and then started with Kimley Horn and Associates up here in Dallas in July of 2011. I have been working with the water and wastewater team here in the Dallas office the entire time. When I started, we were about eight people and we're now up to 24 people, which has been really exciting to see growth. And additionally, we've, we've sent people off to start other offices in other areas of the state. And so um, really I've interacted with a lot more people and our team has grown a lot, but here in Dallas, we're up to about 24 folks who focus solely on water and wastewater consulting. I became licensed PE in December of 2015. I still remember where I was driving when people started texting me to tell me that PE results were out. So I pulled over and was screaming in excitement on my car in a, a shady gas station in Dallas. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, I've, I'm about 10 years into my career now. It'll be 10 years this summer, which feels like it's flown by. And so I'm a project engineer and project manager for water and wastewater projects. So we'll get into more of project specifics and then a typical day in the life of a consulting engineer. So, and then um, here's, here's our graduation photos, which are still um, hanging on the wall in the civil engineering building somewhere. Um, but here's me on the job. So I get to do really cool field stuff sometimes for work, including climbing this water tower. So it's a little bit hard to tell, but this is on top of a really tall water tower in Fate, Texas. If you're driving on I-30 East, and you go through Fate and you see an elevated storage tank, aka a water tower on the south side of 30 there. That is one that we designed and I'm on top of that water tower in this photo. So that was a really fun day. A little bit more about me personally. Um, I love art projects. I got really into crocheting a few years ago, which makes me feel like an 80 year old, but it's really fun. I also love building things. So I think that's kind of the that's kind of what sparked my interest in engineering to begin with, is doing hands-on building things. So here's, here's kind of a sample, a little bit more structural route. Um, but I built a deck in my backyard with the help of some friends. So that was really, really fun. Love home improvement projects. Um, we've done built-in bookshelves in our house and some other construction projects. And I love traveling. Um, especially before COVID. COVID actually ruined my streak of going somewhere out of the country for 10 years. Um, but we hope to resume that this year. I am married to Ben. We got married going on four years ago, I think. Uh, this is us in New Zealand. So we went there last year and kayaking in Milford Sound in New Zealand, which was absolutely incredible. And then last May, I had a little boy. Um, ben and I didn't know that we were going to be having a pandemic baby, but we did. We didn't find out the gender, so it was a big surprise that I had a little boy, but Levi is now nine months old. He's awesome. Um, and so that's been really, really fun being a parent and see him grow and, and learn about the world. So we'll dive into water wastewater engineering. So what do water and wastewater engineers do? Dive in a little bit with projects. So if this was an interactive presentation, I would be asking for some guesses at how many miles of water pipeline are buried underground in Dallas? A, a large part of my job, especially at the beginning of my career, was pipeline. So whether that was pipeline rehabilitation or brand new pipelines, um, there's a lot of stuff buried underground that I think that 
until I started working even, I wasn't aware of just how much hidden stuff was beneath the surface. So how many miles of water pipeline does City of Dallas, Dallas Water Utilities have and maintain? Um, think of a number in your head. That number is actually 5,000 miles of pipeline. And this is water only. So wastewater is a whole other category. Storm sewer is a whole other category. 5,000 miles is the equivalent of driving from Brownsville, Texas up to Alaska. So that is a huge responsibility just in Dallas for, for the Dallas Water Utilities Group to maintain, um, to rehabilitate, to replace pipelines. We see that a lot. Like I think we've seen that impact very greatly with our crazy winter weather last week. When the ground gets that cold and the ground starts shifting around, Dallas experienced hundreds of main breaks. Communities all over North Texas have seen a lot of water main breaks. And so when you drive down the road and you see a cone and some water bubbling out of the ground, that's probably what's going on. And a lot of our communities are still trying to play catch up from the crazy weather last week. Um, and so pipeline projects are a huge part of our practice here to help Dallas kind of stay on top of all that. Here's a sample photo of more of a small diameter residential project. So this project was actually down in Kessler Park. There was a narrow alley behind houses and the infrastructure there was literally almost 100 years old. These pipelines had been put in the ground in the 1920s and were in desperate need of being replaced. So actually they were having some red water issues. They had old cast iron pipes and the chemicals or the, the treatment, the treated water was starting to leach some of the metal from the pipe so that when residents were turning on their faucets, they were getting red water running out, which is not something that anybody wants to experience. And so we helped Dallas design a trenchless rehab solution. So instead of digging up this whole water line to repair, they were actually able to line the pipe with um, a felt epoxy resin liner that is inverted inside out in the pipe. And so instead of having to go and dig it up, because this water line went under garages, under fences, this is about a 10 foot wide alleyway. And it's got a water line, a sanitary sewer line, and a gas pipeline buried. So it was a very congested, tight corridor but we were able to rehabilitate the water line, essentially install a new pipe instead of inside of that existing pipe and reconnect all of the water services. Here's an example of where that pipeline was. We, the, the contractor patched in a piece of pipe, but you see this, this wall, this foundation there, and that shows you how close that water line was to existing structures. So again, a lot of stuff gets buried out of sight, out of mind, um, people build stuff on top of it throughout the course of the years. And then we're left having to figure out, okay, what do we do? How do we rehab this? How do we replace it? So it's kind of a fun challenge um, on rehab projects to, to have to deal with what has built up over the years. So as a water wastewater engineer, our job often is to evaluate different alternatives. What's gonna be cheapest? What's gonna be least impactful to residents? What is the least amount of risk during construction of something going wrong. So we help our clients evaluate alternatives and then we do the engineering design for a contractor to go build those alternatives. And so as a water wastewater consultant specifically, I work for a variety of different clients, right? So we do work for Dallas Water Utilities. I do a lot of work with Town of Highland Park, Town of Flower Mound, North Texas Municipal Water District, so if you're in water wastewater working for a public entity, for example, if you work for Dallas Water Utilities, you'll have a group of projects that you're kind of managing, you're, you're reviewing plans that consultants submit to you for a review, you're coordinating with contractors during, during construction, um, you have a group of projects, whereas me as a consultant, I have a group of clients and whatever projects they have needs on, whatever they want us to help us out with, that's what I'm working on. And so we'll go a little bit more into day in the life of a consultant later. Here is another pipeline rehab project, which is one of my favorites. It is ongoing and it is in the city of Dallas as well. This is a wastewater rehab project. And as you can see from the photo on the left here, this is really big pipe. Uh, the photo on the right shows an access shaft over an existing 120 inch diameter sewer line. 
So within the city of Dallas, we've got two wastewater treatment plants, very creatively named. One is Central Wastewater Treatment Plant. It's kind of in central Dallas, close to downtown. The other is Southside Wastewater Treatment Plant, which as you can guess is on the south side of town, kind of in South Dallas County. And the guys at the south side plant several years ago after some heavy rains started seeing like islands of grass coming into their plant. They started seeing fish <laughs> come into the entry point of the wastewater treatment plant. So they said, hey, we, we probably have something going on upstream. And what they discovered was that there were actually sinkholes on top of the 120 inch. The 120 inch had corroded to the point where there were holes in the top of the pipe. And so when it rained, a lot of extra water and dirt and fish and all sorts of stuff was entering the pipeline. And so Dallas called us and said, hey, we need you guys to help us rehab this pipeline because it is corroding and it's having issues. And, and so we did, we helped them evaluate a handful of alternatives, what was gonna be the cheapest to replace this nearly three miles of 120 inch diameter pipe. I mean, this is huge pipe, you can drive a car through it, right? Um, and so we eventually decided on slip lining. Slip lining is a rehab method where you cut open the top of the existing pipe, you leave the existing pipe in place, but then you drop new segments of new, on, in this case, fiberglass pipe, cut open the top of the existing pipe, you drop new segments of slightly smaller pipe in and push it down the line. And so I think I've got another photo here of that happening. So here you can kind of see that existing pipe is we took the top half off essentially here is a new piece of 110 inch diameter fiberglass pipe this is called the jacking frame and so they'll drop a piece of pipe in and then they've got an, a hydraulic piece of equipment that that pushes that pipe kind of down and into place and then they'll reset and drop the next piece in and push that and so you're kind of pushing segmental slip lining you're pushing new segments of pipe into place. Um, so this has been a fantastic project to be a part of, just really impressive to see the scale. I mean, they really don't make sewer line much larger than this. And this is at the very downstream end of Dallas's system um, and, a, and a much needed project so that we didn't see kind of continued pipe collapses. We also, I also work on a lot of facility projects. So, you, you know, you think pipeline, kind of the network of transmission and distribution water lines or wastewater collection lines that are in neighborhoods that then get to increasingly large pipe, pipe interceptors as you get closer to wastewater treatment plants. But I also do a lot of facility work. And so that is water treatment plants wastewater treatment plants. This is actually an aerial shot of North Texas Municipal Water District's treatment plants um, one and two. So they actually have four wastewater treatment plants out in Wiley. They treat nearly a billion, they can treat up to nearly a billion gallons of water a day. And then they pump it out to all of their customers who purchase water from them. So this is this is kind of an aerial shot of um, these are the transmission lines. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, but then water is taken and pumped out into the transmission system. So we have done work on the treatment plant sites. And um, we've also done new pump stations. So uh, kind of a point facility. So this is, a, this is one of the very first things that I helped draft in AutoCAD was a new pump station out in Flower Mound, Texas, out in West Flower Mound. So this was a, an empty site nothing going on here right now. And we designed a pump station facility that currently has a capacity of about 24 million gallons a day that it can pump out into the system. And so I got to help lay out this site, say, okay, well, here's our pump station, here's our tank. We've got plans for a future tank. And that was a really rewarding project to be a part of because I was very involved in design and kind of the behind the computer stuff. But then I also got to see it be built. And so it's something else when you when you draw things on a screen and you you know you're like oh yeah ground storage tank 200 foot diameter and you know sketching it up in black and white lines on a computer is very different from actually going out and seeing it being built and realizing wow this is really large magnitude stuff. So here's some photos from the pump station um, that I got to help design and then see see be built in the field, which was really rewarding.
We also do um, large control valves. And so it's a little, you, you might struggle to get a sense of scale on this job, but this is um, a spot in the North Texas transmission system where they have pumped water to this site and then they're filling various tanks downstream. And so we need a flow control valve to kind of modulate the pressure and flow that is being passed through to those tanks. Um, so that we're not filling the tanks at too high of a pressure or, you know, blowing the top off of the tanks. You need to really knock down the pressure so then it just flows nice and easy into the tank. So uh, this, this kind of navy looking valve right here is a 42 inch butterfly valve with an electric actuator. And then this large blue thing right here is actually the downstream end of a sleeve valve, which this sleeve valve was um, 12 feet long. 42 inch diameter is 12 feet long and these valves retail for about $300,000. So it's a, it's a very high end flow control valve, but we get to design everything from the underground vault that these are buried in. We do a lot of hydraulic calculations and really engineering nerd stuff to figure out um, the internal design of the valve so it can pass the right amount of flow and knock down the right amount of pressure. So a lot of, a lot of complex hydraulic calculations and then design of the actual physical vault valves and piping that gets installed. And then some other projects that I work on do a lot of water and wastewater system modeling. So those are computer softwares that um, basically create a computer schematic of systems and determine, hey, as, as stuff keeps developing in the future, what infrastructure do we need to build to serve these different developments, right? Um, elevated storage tanks, I mentioned the one out in Fate. This is a cool picture of actually what it looks like when ESTs are being built. They'll build the concrete pedestal first, then they'll build, build the steel bowl on the ground, and then actually when they do the bowl raising, it's really cool. We've got some videos of that. They actually attach um, kind of jacks or winches at the top of the concrete pedestal and then raise that bowl into place over the course of the day and then get up there and, and weld the roof into place. Lift stations and force mains, some more facilities that you might see in wastewater collection systems and then control valves, which I mentioned on the previous slide. So a lot of variety of projects in water wastewater world. Now I wanna talk a little bit about consulting specifically. Um, so when I was in school, I thought, you know, engineering, okay, I'm going to do just 100% engineering stuff. But what I've come to realize in my nearly 10 years now in consulting is that there's a lot of stuff that goes on throughout the course of the day. It is very fast paced. There's a lot of variety. And so I've kind of boiled it down into four different buckets. Uh, the first one being actual engineering things, right? I love doing this. Math, there is a lot of writing as well. Um, so we're talking spreadsheets, hydraulic calculations, writing reports, writing emails, designing plans, designing specifications. So that's definitely a significant chunk of what I do throughout the course of a normal day. But we've also got project management. And so that sounds like a very fluffy term, right? Some of my business friends say, yeah, I do project management. I'm like, what, is, what does that even mean? But for me, that means a few things. That means um, talking with my fellow project managers to make sure that all of our younger staff, all of our EITs have work to do, that they're staying busy, that they have tasks assigned to them. You know, I have several people that I, I supervise and kind of help give tasks to. And so throughout the course of the day, I end up spending a decent amount of time training younger staff, explaining, hey, this is our goal. These are the tasks that we need to do to get there. Um, so a lot of meetings just amongst our team to talk about, hey, is so-and-so busy? Okay, well, I need help with this. Who do we have available to do this? And there's also the component of financial project management. And so consulting is a business, right? And, and everybody would like to make some money. And so a component of project management is monitoring the financial performance of our job. I actually really like that variety too, because it's very business-based. You know, once a month, we'll look at all of our projects and say, okay, how much did we spend last month? How far along do we actually think we are in the pro project? How much do we want to bill our clients? Um, so the financial management piece is fun and adds some variety. There's also marketing. So I do a lot of this because I work for public clients. 
And in Texas, um, you know, Dallas Water Utilities can't say, hey, I'm just going to give you this project. In Texas, there is a very formal process that public works projects have to go through to be designed. They can't just, you know, pick my brother-in-law because I like this guy. Um, they, they send out requests for proposals, RFPs. Our marketing group will put together a proposal package uh, saying, hey, here's our qualifications. Here's our experience. This is why we'd be a good fit. Oftentimes there are interviews involved. And so I've been involved in a lot of interviews to win work where we go in with our project team and do a little PowerPoint presentation, say, hey, this is why we're qualified. This is why you should pick us. This is why we'd be a good fit for this job. And then hopefully win the project. But but marketing, going out there and looking for new projects and trying to win new projects, sometimes takes a significant amount of time. And then the fourth category, the little icon here is kind of a renaissance man because a lot, honestly, is just whatever else clients need. And often this is, this is project specific, but, you know, I kind of thought, well, I'll get a project and then I'll just work on that project and then we'll meet this deadline and then we'll go on to the next one. There is a lot of random stuff. That, that people might need, that our clients might need, um, especially in the aftermath of the storm last week. Um, some of my clients, you know, Highland Park has called me and say, hey, we got a bunch of water main breaks. Can you help us do a map to show what fire hydrants are currently out of service because we've had to valve off some water lines to try and fix them, right? So there's a lot of random stuff that pops up um, because you're serving a variety of clients, which I actually think is really fun. And I've gotten to really enjoy especially later on in my career, being more directly involved with clients and helping them with those random things. And then every day is different. So I kind of put some graphics together here of, or we'll, we'll get to that, but kind of a typical day. So Monday at 7 a.m., um, I'm actually not in the office, hanging out with Levi. So being a mom now has been fun. I do daycare drop off every day. This is Levi stealing my eggs in the morning, stealing my extra eggs. So I do daycare drop off and I actually have some flexibility to get in the office a little bit later. So actually in the office, let's pretend Monday, 8.30 in the morning. What am I working on? That's probably going to be some project management time. So we've got a Monday morning team meeting where all of our team gets together. Right now it's virtually. Normally it's been in a conference room, but we'll all meet together first thing Monday morning and say, hey, what is everybody working on? Everybody busy? What deadlines do we have this week? Have people done QAQC on these plan sets that we're sending out to clients? And then I'll typically help my EIT get started on some specific tasks that she's working on. So, you know, I'm not doing any of my own project stuff yet. I'm facilitating other stuff. So that's kind of first thing in the morning for a few hours. And maybe then I, I'll work on a little bit of marketing. So, you know, client X told us, has, has asked us or has selected us to do a risk and resiliency study. I say, hey, we need to do this report for EPA. Can you help us do that? And so we start writing a contract. We propose a contract to them. We say, okay, well, here's the scope. Here are the specific tasks that we think you need us to do. Here's the fee. Here's how much you're going to pay us for us to do that for you. And then contract terms and conditions, which is kind of the legal stuff. So I'll work on that for a little bit. You know, I need to get that to them by Wednesday. So I'll work on that. So 11.47. Finally, time for some engineering stuff. Yay, engineering writing. I've got some hydraulic analyses that I need to do. You know, one of our sites for our phase five project. Okay, well, we know that the HGL is 597 at the pipeline. So let's run the hydraulics to figure out what size of pipe we need. We need to design this valve. So I'm just settling in to get some actual engineering work done, some of my own project work. And then 1148 rolls around and... Highland Park calls and says, hey, we got this construction issue. Hey, can you help us out with this? Hey, can you look at that? Um, can you pull these numbers? My boss is asking me for these numbers. Can you do this for me really quick? So there's a surprising amount of text messages or emails or, hey, oh my gosh, I need this. Can you help? Um, which is fun. So kind of threw a wrench in my plans to do my engineering work, but here I am doing Renaissance man stuff, whatever else the client needs. So afternoon rolls around. Yay, now I'm able to spend a little bit more time on engineering, but then an EIT needs help. So we're doing some more management stuff. And then now maybe I'll spend a little bit more time on this marketing thing because it's still due Wednesday. Um, so it varies day to day, right? And at end of day o'clock, 
at the end of the day, we're, we're home reading color books, right? So, so that's kind of a typical run through of a day and just the variety in the day. So some days it's really heavy on engineering and maybe you're not doing, having to do very much marketing stuff. It's kind of sprinkled. Some days look like this, like this might be an interview week where we're spending hours preparing and practicing our interviews to win this job. Some days it looks like this. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough time to do everything that I need to do. Some days look like this. <laughs> a lot of days look like this where everything is just on fire and you're trying to keep your head above water and get everything done that you need to get done. But um, I've really enjoyed consulting life. So I did a little breakdown here of why I like engineering. I mean, I really enjoy math. I really enjoy problem solving and finding new and creative ways to um, fix issues or to to do different things. There's, you know, nerdy things. I love finding out about nerdy things. When I heard about this 120 inch pipe project, I just think that is so cool. It's just mind blowing to me that there's pipes that are that big in the world and oh, all these methods and how do we build things and, and specify things to fix them. And then there's a little bit of um, kind of a philanthropic aspect, I guess, improving quality of life. Specifically, I was attracted to water and wastewater for this. You know, waste uh, water is essential to life. Sanitation is essential to a healthy life. And so I like that our projects help improve quality of life in communities. And then specifically why I like consulting, I mean, some days are very crazy, but I really like the variety. I like interacting with lots of people. I've loved getting to know a variety of clients and kind of their personalities, their needs, their wants, the different projects. So um, interacting with people, that's, that's not something that you typically think of when you might think of an engineer of, you know, the stereotype is, oh, they're all very introverted, don't like talking to people. Um, I love it. I love meeting people. And that's been really cool part of consulting. Compensation is typically better in consulting. Um, our salaries are very good, very competitive, typically higher than you would see if you're working on maybe the public side of things. If you're working for um, a municipal client or a utility, um, we also get bonuses and great health benefits. So there's definitely a money component there, um, but then also developing others. So we're always growing our team, growing people around us, hiring new people. And so training them to kind of be the next generation is really enjoyable for me as well. So that's the end of my formal presentation, um, kind of short and sweet, but I hope that you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, um, feel free to shoot me an email. I think Jonathan has my contact information or your teachers hopefully have my contact info. I love talking about my career in water, wastewater engineering. And so I hope that's something that uh, you consider for your future careers.